In a previous video, I taught you how to animate a flashing animation for the Bodhi Island Lighthouse, which is the one on the left. Now I'm going to show you how to make a rotating one for the Cape Hatteras Lighthouse, which is the one on the right. But first, some context so you can see what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. The Cape Hatteras Lighthouse used to have a first order Fresnel lens, but during World War II, it was removed so that the lighthouse could be used as a watchtower to look for German U-boats. When the time came to put the lens back in the lighthouse though, they completely lost track of where they put it. So, they put in a new lens called a DCB-224 Aero Beacon instead. A DCB-224 Aero Beacon has two reflectors on it. This lens makes a full rotation every 15 seconds, causing a flash every 7 and a half seconds. And that is what I'm going to be animating. The first thing you do is open GMAX and Trains Asset Creation Studio. The first thing we're going to do is create a cylinder. This is going to be the rotor that rotates the entire mechanism. Now the Z coordinates on GMAX is the height and that's what I'm going to use to tell it how high I want this object to be to fit inside the lantern room. I already took note of what the Z coordinates for the lantern room were in the original model that I made for the lighthouse so that I could do this more easily. Another method would also be to add an attachment point to the lighthouse mesh and then just attach this mesh to it that way but that's a little bit more complicated this is a lot easier especially since if the attachment point turns out to be facing the wrong way you end up having to rotate the attachment point until it's facing correctly so I prefer doing it this way making a separate mesh and then just making it the correct height by default so I won't have to attach it manually anyway let's see Now you don't really have to name these parts, I just do it to make it easier for me. You can just keep them the same name that they are, as far as I know anyway. Now I'm going to texture it. You cannot export anything to trains unless it is textured. It has to be the same name as the texture that you plan on using, otherwise it might confuse the game. Now, I'm not really sure what a checkered texture is. I usually just use the bitmap ones. Now, you can also make the textures reflective and stuff like that, but since this is a night animation, it's automatically going to make it a glowing texture, and there aren't any modifications you can make to it. Now, I'm going to change the view so that you can actually see the mesh and what it looks like. Oops, accidentally clicked somewhere I wasn't trying to. <laughs> okay, just delete that. Anyway, let's see. What are we going to do now? I have the rotator. Now, I need... I need a box and that's going to be used to support the two reflectors on top of the rotor. Now I'm going to texture this as well. I'm just going to give it the same texture. Now I need two um, squares that I'm going to use for the housing that's going to um, house the light bulbs and the um, lighting mechanisms inside the reflectors. <clears throat> now, since you obviously can't go inside the lantern room of this lighthouse and measure these um, machines by hand since no one ever lets you in the lantern room, I'm pretty much guessing about the um, the um, dimensions of these parts of the, um, the reflectors. That's pretty much the best I can do.
No one can ever get permission to enter these parts of the lighthouse because they're very sensitive and easily damaged. And a lot of times people have accidentally damaged these pieces when visiting the lighthouse. In any case, these are the parts that are going to uh, house the mechanisms that contain the, the lights and the reflectors. Now I just need to add the lights themselves. For the lights, I'm going to use cylinders, and for the beams of light coming from the uh, mechanism, I'm going to use cones, because that's what most people seem to use. Actually, I think some people use planes as well, like a flat plane, and then just have two of them so in the shape of a, a, of a T. Uh, that, that's also a thing that you can do, but I prefer using cones. It doesn't really make much of a difference, though. It'll still look pretty much the same. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and texture these. These are going to be the actual lights, and I do have a texture for that as well. Now, you can't really modify textures for night meshes. The game just automatically makes them glow in the dark textures. Now I need another of the same mesh for the other side. Just move it on up to the correct location and then rotate it. To rotate it faster, you can also enter the specific location you want it to go. Oops, I accidentally typed 99 instead of 90. On the left, I think, okay. So now I have it rotated exactly where I want it. Just have to place it inside the housing and texture that one as well. And then I can work on the beams of light. Now, I'm going to try to make each beam of light one mile long, but I'm not sure what the game's limitations are on how long these beams of light can be. So it might trigger errors, and I'll have to use some, um, what's the word? Trial and error to figure out uh, how long these beams of light can be. I might also end up use, uh, looking at other lighthouses that have beams of light that are on the download station and seeing how they tackle this problem and how long they made their beams of light. Now, make sure you're saving this often because I don't know why, but on my computer, GMAX keeps randomly closing on me. And it would be a shame for you to lose all your saved data. Also, another interesting fact about animation meshes on this game, you cannot edit an animation mesh. If you have to make changes to the animation, you have to start the entire thing over from scratch again, and it's really annoying. But animation meshes cannot be, they cannot be edited. Now, for the beams of light, I'm going to try to make them semi-transparent since obviously real beams of light are not solid objects and you would likely be able to see through it. But, um, the game might not let it be transparent. It's probably still going to make it a glow-in-the-dark object. Anyway, this is going to be the beam of light. It is exactly one mile long, measured in centimeters. By the way, I forgot to point this out. In animation meshes, everything you make has to be in the metric system, not the imperial system. It won't work in the imperial system. I don't know why, but they told me that that's just the way it works. So yeah, this mesh is one mile long on one side. Well, it has two beams that are one mile long. So the total size of the mesh is like two miles. Not entirely sure if the game's going to allow this, but we'll see. Now, you can also use this window to choose the 
transparency of an object, the lower the number, the more transparent it is. However, I'm not sure if it's possible to make a glow-in-the-dark texture also transparent. That will depend on the game's limitations. In any case, let's add the texture for the beam of light. It's just a white texture. It's the same one I used for the Bodhi Island Lighthouse. Okay, so we have one beam of light. Now I just gotta make another one. And since I already entered the size of the beam of light, it's as simple as just adding a second one. Now I'm gonna rotate and move that into place. Now I'm going to change the pivot points of the meshes to make sure they all rotate with the rotor instead of rotating individually. So I'm just going to move the pivot itself and not the mesh. You can also enter by hand where you want it to go. It basically just needs to be in the center of the, of the entire mesh rather than um, in the center of the individual mesh. So as long as the pivot points are all in the same location, they should rotate correctly. Now under helpers, I'm going to create a dummy animation. Everything has to be attached to the dummy in order for it to be animated in the game. The game is basically loading the dummy and looking at the data that explains what is attached to the dummy and then it animates everything based on what the dummy is supposed to be doing. Now this has to be perfectly centered obviously because if it's not then the animation is going to be all, all misaligned. Okay so for the frames this animation needs to last for 15 seconds like I said earlier so I need about 450 frames. Now most people who animate for this game use three more frames than needed. I'm not really sure why they do that but that's just the way it's done and uh, you know what they say when in Rome do as the Romans do. If all the other animators say this method works then it should be a good method to use. So 450, 354 frames that ought to do it. Now I'm going to animate it by simply clicking animate. Now I'm going to go to the last frame and I'm going to rotate the dummy 360 degrees. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention most lighthouses that have a rotating beacon, the beacon rotates clockwise, not counterclockwise. That's very important if you're trying to animate it realistically. The Cape Hatteras lighthouse is no exception. Its lens also rotates clockwise. One exception I could think of is the Boston Harbor Lighthouse. That one actually rotates counterclockwise for some reason. In any case, I rotated this 360 degrees. Now the animation knows that by the time it's over, it would have had to have done a complete 360 degree rotation. And then when you test play it, it's rotating just like I expected it to. Okay, now we're going to go back to the first frame, and then I'm going to attach all of the mesh pieces to this so that when the dummy rotates, they will rotate as well. So click Select and Link. And then click on this, uh, this um, symbol as well and then just click on what you want to link it to. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, the dummy has to be named. This is really important. It has to be d.r. whatever you want to name it. The name, it doesn't really matter as long as the first four um, digits are b.r. and then whatever else you want to put behind it. For some reason, the game will not recognize it unless you name it that. And if you have multiple dummies, they all have to be b.r. something, or it's not going to work. So now I'm linking them all to the 
um, to the dummy so that the dummy will rotate them. And then we'll test play it to make sure it works before exporting it. Because like I said, if you export it and then try to modify it later, it won't work. So one by one, they're all being linked to the dummy. And this includes the platform that supports the, um, the lenses and the rotor itself. All right, now let's test the animation to make sure it's working correctly. It's rotating just like I expect it to. Yep, it's working just like it should. Okay, I think it's ready to be exported now. The entire thing has to be exported as a .im file first. I'm going to place it in the night folder of the lighthouse I was working on. Just to keep things simple. I'm just going to call it DCB224 Arrow Beacon. Because I'm not very creative. <laughs> okay, now export it again as a .kin file. Most people just call it night.kin to be simple. Because that's pretty much what it is. It's the night animation. You don't really need to be that um, special about the naming. Okay, now let's port it over to the game and see if it works. First, I need to find the folder that I saved it in. There we go. Uh, delete the .gmw file because it it's not um, the game does not read that file. Now just copy all the files that were created. And now, real quick, I'm gonna open Trains 12, which is the one I use to create objects. Like I said earlier, it's easier to create it in this game. Though it's a lot easier to test if it works in the um in Trains 2019 because you can preview it before going into the game. In any case, you can click on content. Wow, that's the fastest it's ever loaded. It usually takes a millennium. <laughs> Alright, now I'm gonna press Control Shift E to edit it in Explorer. Now I'm going to copy all this stuff into the night folder, but first deleting the original file, which wasn't working. Okay, this mesh is a total of two miles long. Let's see if the game will let you load it. I'm gonna to go to the mesh file just to check and see if, it's, if it worked correctly. The day mesh is okay. Uh-oh, it's faulty. It wasn't able to load the IM file. When you get it, an error like that as a content creator, that means that either the mesh didn't export correctly or the mesh is too big and the game can't run it. I had the same issue when exporting the day mesh for the Cape Hatteras Lighthouse because one of the pieces of the mesh didn't export correctly and I had to redo that section of the mesh to make it work again. And for this, it's doing this because the beam of light is way too long. Apparently, two miles is way too long for this game. So I'm going to have to shorten it a little bit. But first, I'm going to look at some other night animations of other lighthouses that are on the download station to get an idea of how big I can make these beams of light and still get away with it. Okay, I'm going to put down some other animated lighthouses so we can compare the sizes of their beams and figure out what's the largest beam the game will allow. Okay, so we have a lighthouse from presumably Europe, one from New Zealand, and one from Germany, all of which have scripted animations at night. Let's see which one is the longest so we can get an idea of what the game considers acceptable.
Man, these European lighthouses are so much smaller than our American counterparts. Let's see if they're actually small enough to fit inside. Yep, the German one fits very comfortably inside the Cape Hatteras lighthouse. What about this generic European one? Yep, that one fits com comfortably inside it too. What about the one from New Zealand? Yep, that one fits in very comfortably too. Now, to be fair, the um, European lighthouses are usually on cliffs. Oh, look at that. The Bodie Island lighthouse also fits inside it, sort of. So yeah, European lighthouses are often on cliffs, so they don't have to be quite as tall. The North Carolina lighthouses are on flat land, so they have to be a lot taller. Now let's play all these animations at night and see which one has the longest beam and use that as a benchmark to see what the game can handle. Okay, one by one they're all turning on. The Cape Hatters one isn't animated yet because I haven't finished this mesh yet. Wow, look at New Zealand over there with its large beam of light. The guy that made that lighthouse must have literally pushed it to the game's limits. He probably found out what the limit was and then went just under that. So let's look at this German one first. Alright, let's see how long this German beam of light is. Oh, I ran out of land. Let's try this way. <laughs> okay, a lip about that long. So the German lighthouse has two beams that are each about 1,500 feet, give or take, in length. So now let's go over to the generic European lighthouse and see how long that one is. So far, the generic European lighthouse is winning. Okay, so we got a little over 3,400 feet for the generic European one. Now let's measure the New Zealand one. Wow, you're not going to believe this, but after converting this to feet, it turns out that this beam of light is a bit over one and a half miles long. So I guess that is the limitation of the game. Of course, it might also depend on the poly count. So to be on the safe side, I'm going to make each beam about a mile, no, about a half a mile in length so that the total is only a mile. That should keep it, uh, that should keep it under the one and a half mile limit. Well, I shortened the beams of light and now the animation works. However, one thing I forgot to do was to add an anim loop speed. If you don't add that, the game will default it to zero and the animation won't play in game. So make sure you have anim loop speed set up or it's not going to work. Or rather, it'll appear but it won't animate. Okay, here's what I mean. Since I didn't have anim loot speed set, it just doesn't animate even though the mesh appears. Now here's what I meant. Right click on the mesh and um, click anim loop speed and set it to 1 for it to work in the game. If it's set to 0, the animation won't work. If it's set to 1, it'll play at normal speed. A higher number will make it play faster, and a decimal point will make it play slower. And I'm guessing a negative number makes it play backwards, but I'm not sure. I've never tried that before. Now let's try it. This time it should work. Yes, it's finally working!
Now we're going to test it in the route that I built for it. This is the Outer Bank Shinkansen, a fictional high-speed railroad that starts at Washington, D.C. and ends at Charleston, South Carolina, stopping at famous landmarks in the Outer Banks area, including the Ocracoke Village Lighthouse, which also has a night animation I believe I've already told you about. Now this line is really busy, so to prevent the station from slowing down the line, there are several waiting areas for the trains that are arriving at the station. Okay, so now the journey brings us across the George H.W. Bush Memorial Bridge, a 12-mile long, perfectly straight, four-track bridge that links Ocracoke Village with Hatteras Island. This bridge makes it easier to cross between the two islands, because now you don't have to take the car ferry across the, um, across the channel using the um, uh, North Carolina Route 12 ferry. Located near the town of Buxton, North Carolina, we have the Cape Hatteras Lighthouse. Finally with night animations, and this one is correct to scale. The other one was too short, as the Bodie Island Lighthouse I made was taller than it. But the Cape Hatteras Lighthouse is supposed to be the tallest lighthouse in the United States. So that just didn't sit right with me. Now let me make sure it's facing the right way, because it might be facing differently than the other model I had. Let's see which way it faces on the map. It looks like the entrance is on the north-ish side of the lighthouse. And the way it's facing is really important because the two black stripes start at the north and south side of the lighthouse and they spiral upward until they reach the top. The white stripes start at the west and east side of the lighthouse. I could not get the textures to appear correctly on this because they're really complicated. Luckily, this is one of the only lighthouses with this specific pattern, so I probably will never have to do this again. Now let's test the night animation, shall we?
Now we cross the bridge into Body Island, named after the first person to own land on this island. It is not pronounced Body Island as I originally thought. Anyway, I'm not sure how in use that section of water is, so I might have to have a drawbridge there. Hopefully not, because it will slow down the trains that go through it. Not really sure if anyone uses the water between Hatteras Island and Body Island though. But over there you see the Body Island Lighthouse. I'm trying to get in the habit of pronouncing it correctly. There's an Amtrak station next to it. There's an Amtrak train that runs from the Cape Henry Lighthouse to Raleigh, North Carolina. And it stops at Body Island along the way, as well as a few other stops. Rocky Mount is also one of the stops included on this line. Let's look at the night animation of this lighthouse again. Now the two Amtrak tracks run parallel to the Shinkansen tracks until they get to the station of Whalebone, an Amtrak only station. Whalebone is a town that's located next to the only road that leads to the Outer Banks. So I figured it was a great place to put a station. You could drive to the Outer Banks, park, into, uh, park at one of the Amtrak stations, and then just continue from there. You can also transfer further up the line to a Shinkansen trains if you want to travel on the high-speed line. But we'll look at that in a little bit. Now our journey continues north towards the town of Nags Head, where the Shinkansen station is located. This is a local-only station. Only the local trains stop here. Amtrak also stops at Nags Head, and it's a transfer station between it and the local lines. There's a ramp that you can travel down to get from the station, and it's fully handicap accessible. I was going to have a railroad crossing there, but then I realized the tracks are high enough that a human can fit underneath it, so a bridge could have been put there. In the background is the Outer Banks Mall, which is pretty much across the street from the train station. Now, one thing I forgot to mention, be really careful going to the beaches of the Outer Banks. Uh, someone from Maryland actually died because he went too far from the coastline and got swept to sea, presumably. Now, one thing you should remember is that the lighthouses that were built in the Outer Banks warn you of a section of coastline where the north-moving Gulf Stream collides with a south-moving current, creating larger-than-usual waves. Ships have run aground on these islands and been ripped to pieces by these waves, so... These are not things that you can play around with. They are, you should take these really seriously. Be very careful when being on the beach. Do not go too far from the coastline. Anyway, this is what the walkway underneath the tracks are going to look like. And it's pretty much just a boardwalk. Each station has a theme that's similar to the town that it's located in, and since this is a coastal town, the train station platforms are just pretty much boardwalks. There's a ramp that leads from the station to the parking lot. Alright, let's have one final look at this lighthouse's li uh, night animation before we leave.
By the way, since I couldn't figure out how to make the animation stop but the mesh still be present during the day, I just have a picture of the lens as the um, daytime mesh. And I actually have it set up so that if you look at the lantern from different angles, the lens will also be visible from different angles. So that's all I have for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.